I feel the pain of the socially and economically marginalized many of South Africa. I am South African, born and bred, but you would be grossly mistaken to use me as a poster child of the South African reality. My life and experiences are antithetical to the lives and experiences of over three quarters of my population. You see, the average South African is not only unemployed, the average South African is unemployable. They do not require the necessary education and skills to take place in the marketplace. To add insult to injury, the healthcare system does not fare any better. Healthcare is a luxury good in South Africa, reserved for the haves through its exorbitant pricing, while the majority are led to an early grave by easily treatable medical conditions. So how do you participate in an economy that does not give you a chance? When the institutions that are meant to keep you alive seem to be designed to orchestrate your demise. Well, you do what hundreds and thousands of South Africans do. You take it by force. You display your frustrations and your helplessness by violently taking from the likes of me. When crime is the only way to put bread on the table, crime becomes a viable career option. This is the few versus many tension that I struggle to make sense of. I feel pain when the fire consumes life in Amazon, destroying trees, animals, and all the richness of our wonderful rainforest. I live in Brazil, a land blessed by God and beautiful by nature. The cream of the forest is on our flag, in our anthem, and our culture of abundance and hospitality. But I feel pain when blind greed, economic and political old mindsets threaten people, pollute waters, silence birds, leaving a trail of ruins. Our Indians paint in their skin like scales of fish and snakes with colors of birds and flower because they recognize themselves as part of the same force. I feel this, the pain on my own skin when the forest burns because my life burns a little too. We are nature. But the mistaken idea of nature as a resource to be explored, accumulated and consumed has created a feeling of separation that is leading us into the abyss. The destroy life in Amazon covers our blue sky with dark clouds of sadness, taking away the power of the earth that feeds our body and souls. Burning Amazon is a sad portrayal of a global condition that weakens and leaves us lost and scared. What is our role in this setting? Can you do more than just complain and accuse? We must do much more. This is the human versus nature tension I struggle with. I feel the pain of parents when asked by their child, what are you doing about this? I was together with my daughter in Durban for Ocean Cleanup Day. She asked me, why is there so much plastic waste in the ocean? She recognized some familiar brands, some of those produced by the company I work for and I'm director for. What are you doing about this, she asked me. I thought that's a very good question. I felt torn in that moment, and I still feel torn today. 
We're doing so much to make sustainable living commonplace. But how much is enough? And how fast is fast enough? Much like many business leaders, I need to deliver for our investors who want their dividend this quarter and every quarter. At the same time, I need to safeguard the long-term success and survival of the business. I'm expected to help accelerate the journey to recyclable plastics and grow earnings today. I know there are solutions, but they are expensive. What is the right trade-off choosing between margin today and margin tomorrow? I can arrange green financing, which is the right thing to do. But traditional financing is always cheaper. So what do I do? How do I assign value to an intangible future benefit? This is the same dilemma with essentially all business critical decisions today. I'm frustrated that so many stakeholders seem to prefer short term gains over long term growth. How will I find a better answer to my daughter's question? What are you doing about this, Dad? This is the short versus long-term tension I struggle with.